Okay guys, so on to the last part of um, this sort of inventory bar using resources section. Um, so in the previous one, if I just push play, we've got our inventory bar started. Um, we can go and pick up objects and it adds them to that inventory bar. Um, and obviously then we can, we can use those resources um, should we need them. Okay, so now we're going to add a couple more onto this. So what I'm going to do first of all is go back to my inventory and the inventory HUD I made. Um, so we can just add onto this bar as many things as you want it to be. Um, this sort of background border I've just put in there so we can really see it easily. But of course, um, you, know, you could get rid of that or change it to some kind of nice PNG of something a bit more attractive. <laughs> Um, this is obviously just focusing on the mechanics rather than really the visuals so much. Okay, so um, we used a button before, so I'm going to drag in another button and put it along here. Make sure it's the same size. Okay, and I am going to add an image. Uh, which one should we do first? Well, I can see ammo there, so that'll do. Load in the ammo one. Okay, okay. Somewhere about there I should be okay. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna Control C, Control V, copy one of those, place it over there, and obviously um, that'll need to be changed. So same with you, copy one of you, move you up there. I don't know what key I'm gonna use for this one. Um, hmm. <laughs> um, don't know, maybe R, that'll be fine for now. Um, it looks that R needs to be, uh, no, that is fine in terms of position. The zero, so this button needs to be below the text, so put it there. Okay. So we've got one here ready to go really for our ammo. Lower that down a little. Okay, that's fine. Obviously, you know, this kind of thing you can spend a lot more time tweaking. Um, just kind of make it look about right. That should be fine. So let's compile that. So we will, oops, sorry, no, nope. I always forget this anchoring. So anchor them all to the top. These new things we've just made. There we go. And then obviously, there we go, we can see it there on our um, inventory bar. But of course, it's not going to do anything just yet. I think because I copied the number, okay, it doesn't even copy over the binding either. That's useful. Okay, so what we need now is to something to bind this to, which is going to need to be um, like an ammo count. So in my um, First person character. Uh, I'm going to create a new variable. So Laurie just went past. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm going to call it ammo. And this is going to be um, an integer. And then obviously, if we just compile, we can set the default value, which is going to be what we would start with. So you, if it's a kind of a survival based game, you might want your character to start with nothing. Um, I'm going to get them to start with like, you know, they've got like three bullets or something. There you go. So they start with three bullets. Uh, okay, so what we now want to do is also do our action mapping again. So into project settings, find our inputs, and see before we did use item med. I'm going to create another one, and this is going to be called use item ammo. And I think we set it to R. Again, these keys I'm using probably don't make much sense. Um, there you go, R. You can change that to whatever you want. Okay, so my character. Um, see, I have this code here for use item. Uh, med. I want to kind of 
essentially do the same thing for um, the ammo. So I'm going to do um, use item ammo, okay, which we know in the event is just push the, the R key. I'm going to have a branch there as well. Okay, and that is going to be again based on a, a condition which means um, we're using an ammo box. It's going to be greater than or equal to again. And then our ammo amount. So if we've got more than, so this is the, so I need to think of what I'm doing properly. <laughs> this is the ammo box. So it's going to be going to use it to um, essentially like reload our ammo into the, into the gun. Um, so again, that's just going to be one, isn't it? So if we've got one or more ammo boxes, we can use them. Um, and what that will do is it will actually, yep. So we've got ammo. I might change this to ammo box, the name of that integer, because um, we're going to need two things. We're going to need the number of ammo boxes, and we're going to need the amount of ammo. So there's going to be another variable called ammo, which is the amount of actual ammo that we have. Okay, which that's what wants to start at three. And the ammo boxes wants to start at zero. Okay, that makes more sense. All right, so what that's going to then do is set the ammo amount to plus. So it's going to add to the current ammo amount. Um, how much ammo do I want a box to give me? 10, something like that. So it's going to give me 10 more ammo. Um, does it need to do anything else? Yes, it does. So then it also needs to set the ammo box count to minus uh, ammo box. Uh, obviously, it will take one box away. Um, let's just move this up out of the way. So we've got this one here, which is the first one we did, which is the the, the medicine, so the, the health. So that um, if we had one or more um, of the herbs, it would set health to plus 0.2, and the mint pop, the mint things, the items down by one. And then this one is ammo, so that will condition will be if you've got one or one ammo box, it will set the amount of ammo to plus 10, and the ammo boxes to minus one. Great, that's cool. So now we need to actually have some ammo boxes in the world to pick up. So I'm going to go back to my content and go to my pickups folder. And I'm actually going to duplicate this herbs um, that I made before. I've done all the hard work. So I'm going to just call it um, ammo, ammo box. Okay. Load it up, go to the viewport. Obviously, the model itself, that's going to have to be changed to a different model, which I haven't imported. <laughs> so that might be a good idea. So back to content again. Um, I'll keep it in, in pickups, actually. So I'm going to import again. Um, here goes an ammo box that I made super quickly just a minute ago. And it's literally just a box with a texture on. So let's go back to my MO box blueprint, and in my static mesh, I can now have the ammo box. And there it is. Lovely. <laughs> I know it's really, really simple, but it'll do. I'm going to compile that. Um, some things that I could just show you that, that we can add on here. So the ammo box could be, um, you know, if I place this in the world now, um, Place it over here somewhere. It could be just sat, you know, on the surface like that, which is fine. You know, when you play a game, 
um, you can see it down there like that. Okay, but what if you, you could have it that style where it's kind of floating and spinning. So I'll just show you how, um, oops, how you can do that if you wanted to. So if you add a component to the blueprint, which is rotating movement, um, rotating rate, remind myself how to do this. We, we want you to rotate. Do I need to compile it? Uh, 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 uh. You're not rotating. Uh, have I missed something? Don't think that X and Y is that's the, the way it rotates. Where's the rotation speed? I feel like this has changed. Let me just pause um, and I'll come back to you. Okay, I don't know what I was doing, but um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't spin in the um, editor here. So um, I've got my rotating movement. Um, Leaving it there at 180 is, is fairly normal. So what I've done is I've placed one of these into the world here. Uh, it won't move until you're actually simulating. So you're actually playing the game. Um, and then you can see here um, that it's rotating like that. So there's the two options. You know, if you want to have it um, a bit more this kind of style, you can do that just really easily with the rotating movement. Um, or you can just leave it standing still. OK, so where were we? <laughs> So you set up uh, ammo box here in the event graph. So I copied this, so I duplicated the um, the mint thing, remember? So what I can do um, is, what's this is pushing the button. It is adding uh, that's interacting, picking it up, yeah. So we need the interaction for this one. So we can use this same guy here. Um, but most of this is gonna be the same, get rid of that. So it's going to, we're gonna push interact. It is gonna be, go through to this character here, but it's not gonna set the mint. It's going to set the ammo box count um, two plus one, isn't it? So add get ammo box set it to plus one uh, delete all of this one um, I like to have the print string in there so that I can see what's going on. Set that to the ammo box. And then obviously destroy itself once we've picked it up. So that will allow us to pick it up. The target just needs to go to there. Okay. So we really just, just copied everything we had from the, the interact option, but changed the setting to the ammo box rather than uh, anything else. So let's just play now. Um, I can come over here, I can still pick up the flowers. Um, when I come up to here, it says E to pick up as well. And I can pick that up. It just doesn't add it to my inventory yet. So I'm going to go back to my inventory. So that's where we've got this guy selected here. And that's the text. So we need to create a new binding for this one. Just to link it to that ammo box amount that I created. So cast to first person character get player character and then we're getting the ammo box amount and there we are okay so let's try that flower that works like that pick up an ammo box and that works like that so I've got one ammo box and one um, herb great so now when I push R you see that does take the ammo count down to none 
but we don't have anything that displays um, our ammo count. So um, in my player character, we are, this is where the ammo amount is stored. Um, so if we go to down here, we need to find, because obviously the shooting and everything is, is all from the, the preset stuff, um, which has again changed since Unreal Engine 4. So if I just go to my first person blueprints, the projectile has a lot more in it this time. Metaphysics impulse. That's not what we want. In the actual gun itself. That's the picking it up. There you go, projectile spawn. So this is all the stuff that's going to fire a projectile, essentially. So we can probably just add on to the end of here. Um, once it's done that, um, cast to first person character, get player character. So we're just adding on to the, all this is just the stuff that Unreal has done already for us, which is spawning the projectile. We're just adding on after that, we want to um, set the just the ammo not the boxes this time the amount of ammo to minus uh, get ammo the amount of ammo by one okay when we shoot uses up one ammo targets are there that's fine um, that's all good. The only thing we now need to do is go back to my inventory, this thing, and we need something that's actually going to tell us how much ammo we have. So I'm going to keep it real simple for now, because I know this has been going on for some time now, this video. Um, so the text is going to be zero. Um, let's just make it a bit bigger, make it a nice obvious color, and it's going to stand out an outline around it. This is going to be our ammo over here. Uh, so we need uh, the text to have another binding on that one. Again, hopefully you're used to these bindings by now. Just cast to wherever that variable is stored, which is in our character. Get player character. And then this time it's get the ammo itself that amount and return it okay so let me push play there we go it starts at three that ammo counter because remember um, i wanted there to be three ammo in the beginning so um, if i push r at the moment it doesn't give me any more ammo because i don't have any ammo boxes all right so if i go over to the ammo box push e and pick that up Okay, so I've got an ammo box. If I push R now, that's given me 10 more ammo. Okay, and if I fire, that ammo is going down. But it's going to go into minuses. So let's just quickly fix that. Um, so yeah, when we, so we now need a branch after this, so a condition. The condition is when uh, the ammo itself, so we can use this same one here, that ammo, uh, is less than or equal to zero, and then we've got none left. We want to disable the firing. Um, let me just remind myself of what that one was. Bear with me just a second. Okay, guys. Yeah, there, there isn't one for stopping it, which is why I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> so what we need to do is just um, 
put this somewhere else essentially. So this branch of whether we can fire or not um, needs to come way back um, to here. So we've got this on fire projectile, um, which I'm hoping is the right one. Um, we also need our, I have to do another cast, cast to first person character, object, get player character, just because I need another reference to that amount of ammo, which is here, move that into there, sorry it's a bit messy, so on, when you fire a projectile, it's going to check this ammo amount, and if it is not less than or equal to zero, essentially, then it will be able to continue on. Okay, and that setting all that will just stop there. So let's just double check that works. I hope it does. So if I pick up my weapon over here, fire. There you go. So now it's got to zero. I'm clicking away and I can't shoot anymore. Um, I come over here, pick up an ammo box, added it to my ammo box count. I press my R key and I've got 10 more ammo. I can shoot that until it's all gone and now I have none left. Okay. Um, I had, did recently do, fairly recently did a video on a full ammo system which you could incorporate into this as well. So again, I'll link that in the description. Um, but yeah, that is continuing on with this inventory bar with um, the setting up the ammo. Um, I was just gonna do every, the last couple of things in, in this video, but I'll do one more in another separate video, um, which will be like having a kind of an antidote, which stops you just dying over time. Okay, so we'll do that in the next one.